Hello to all you lovers out there. Welcome to Love Works with Juan and G. I am Juan. And I'm G. And we are here with July's Bachelor of the Month. Sizzling hot. Mr. Firecracker <laughs> himself. Independence Day. Tie dye. All of that. Mr. Brian Hinton. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for agreeing to have a conversation with us and to bear your soul and your heart and your pains mm -hmm. and your woes and all of that. <laughs> He's looking like I don't know about all that. I ain't signed up for that. <laughs> no, but for real, thank you for agreeing to do this. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, and we're gonna just dive right on into the conversation. Let's do it. Let's ease him on. Ease him on in with some easy, basic questions. Don't jump. No guns blazing. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> so tell us where you're from. I am born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. So you're a Carolina boy. Born and Southern raised. boy. And you have been in Atlanta for how long? I've been in Atlanta about 13, 14 years now. Okay, that's a pretty long time. A it's long, a very long time. time. Yeah, is that most of your life? Uh, give or take a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> how old are you, Brian? Uh, I am 31 going on 32. Okay, okay. 31 going on 32, you just made it over to the 30 club. Yeah. How, how are the yeah. 30s treating What's that been like for you? Actually, I enjoy the 30s. I feel like, you know, I'm stepping into my grown man. I feel, you know, like I'm ready for life now. Were you one of those people that panicked at their 30th birthday? Or were you just like, oh, I'm just 30? No, I was super excited about yeah. it. Because people have been calling me 30 for probably the last seven <laughs> years. Are they saying you look old? I hope not. <laughs> Do they feel like you act older than you are? I think that... I do have an old, so, mm -hmm. but I think it's also the fact that I came here very early and partied. So a lot of people when I was very young that I partied with, I was underage and they didn't know it. Like 17? Uh, give or take a couple of years. <laughs> How <laughs> so old are you okay, well, well, I started partying in Atlanta, no judgment, probably mm -hmm. around no, never no judgment. 13, 14. Wow. 13, 14 years old. And how, so you were lying about your age? Absolutely. Clearly. So what is your what is your mind space? Because I have a fourteen year old son, I can't imagine him wanting to go out there and party. And when I when I think of party, I think of clubbing, drinking, sex, you know, all of those things that you typically do right around eighteen to twenty one. Mm -hmm. So what mind space are you in at thirteen, fourteen that brings you out to the clubs and stuff to party? I don't think it's something uh, that I would endorse or recommend. Uh -huh. I think it definitely came with challenges. Mm -hmm. I think that I had to grow up a lot quicker because I was in an adult game, right. trying to be an adult as a kid. Mm -hmm. right. But on the flip side of it, I think it has helped me a lot because a lot of things that people who are my age now are going through, I've been there and I've done it. So I've already done all the heavy, heavy partying and heavy, heavy drinking and all the other things. So you don't drink heavy anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you trying to oh, I'm with you guys. <laughs> all right. Hence the first ever, uh, interview we had with a cocktail. And I'll right. let you know he went and I'll let cheers. you get it first. Cranberry juice. Oh, hold on, right. mine over here. Can I right. cheers? <laughs> tea, tea. <laughs> okay, so you're a very popular guy. I hate that word. I hate the word. You're very what, well known. What, 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 what word would you use? I'm just... And why do you hate it? I hate it because, like, what is popular? I mean, I think that some people, a lot of people strive to be popular, mm -hmm. and it, it irks me and it bothers me, so I never like to be referred to as popular. Well, you know, I will say this. I think that popular, just like I really hate the word socialite so bad. Oh, yeah. I heard that word, they hate that word so so bad. But when I hear people call themselves popular, call themselves a socialite, I feel like it's like, really? Who calls themselves? It's something that should be bestowed upon right. you. But it's okay for us right. to say that about you because that's how we see you. But I do think when someone's like, oh, I'm a socialite or I'm popular, then they probably are really not. It makes me wonder <laughs> what else do you have going on? Yeah. Like, yeah. if that's your goal to be popular or a socialite, like, I think it's not all cases, but something else is missing. Like you're looking for a sense of validation. Right. Right. But okay, so I want to use pop you're well known in the community. How does that affect your dating life? Uh, if at all. Past, present, or future. Let's start with <laughs> the past. Yeah. Past, I think it definitely has affected it. I think How that so? I think that in the past, because I was younger in relationships and not that old, 
I have gone through the stage of wanting to be on the scene and wanting to be seen. Okay. Like I said, validation. I think I was searching for some of those same things. Right, you know? right. But I think that it made the relationship suffer because I didn't have my focus in the right place. So my focus was sometimes, not all the time in the relationship, but sometimes on being seen or being out versus being where I should have been cultivating a relationship. Okay. okay. So, so since you've talked about your past relationships, so tell us about those. So how many relationships have you been in since you've been 13? <laughs> <laughs> But we would not count anything <laughs> below the legal age of consent. <laughs> Which is 16 in, in Georgia, right? For sex, you mean? The well, age, who said anything about the age six? of consent? Said, <laughs> is it 16 oh, or 17? 17, maybe. Let's, well, go let's just go with 17. So okay. I've been in three relationships, almost. Okay. That I would claim. Okay. Okay, and they all been long-term relationships? Like, how long have those relationships been? Uh, the first one was about, was about three years. Okay. And then there was about a seven, eight year one. Oh. And then that was off and on. In between, it was a very short one. Okay. But I counted because the person mattered. Okay. So, would you consider yourself a relationship oriented person? I love love. Believe it or not, yeah. I mean, I really love partnership. I love growing with somebody. I love mm -hmm. all things that relationships can bring. It's challenging to keep a relationship mm -hmm. sometimes. It's a lot of hard work. People think it's just easy or it's cute to go out with. The person on your shoulder, but when you go home, it's a lot of right. clocking in and hard work and digging through some deep stuff. So I, I would consider myself relationship oriented. I think that you know you touch on some good points about people thinking it's easy. I think a lot of times that in our community, unfortunately, we get caught up on good sex a lot of time and really think that that means that oh, we're supposed to be together. Mm -hmm. And then when that sex gets a little boring, then it's like, well, what do we got left now? Right. I mean, I think friendship is the foundation of yeah. it. One thing I can say about all of my exes is that we are still really good friends. Okay. Will you say that again? Because I am with you on that. I feel like if we can't remain friends after we break up, then well, I question the relationship and I question the, the, the value of it to you. N not you, obviously, because oh, we're still well, together. Well, yeah, but I'm, but the I'm, other person, you know, I, I feel like there should be some semblance of that friendship that will always tie you together. It's like the tie that binds. So I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that too. I actually have a different opinion on that. Oh, I know. That's why I reiterated that. I have a small different right? opinion, but I won't, I'm gonna share that opinion when we come back. We're gonna take a small little short break and listen to this message from our sponsors, and we're gonna get back and, and what I think about this whole. Holding on to friends into new relationships. It's not holding on. We'll talk about it. Language. <laughs> What's up to all you lovers out there? It's Juan and G. <laughs> and we thought this was a great opportunity to encourage all of you lovers out there, all of you lovers out there, to take, go deeper into your relationship and take part in the Emory Strong Together campaign. Yeah, you know, oftentimes, you know, you worry about your physical fitness, your six pack abs, mm -hmm. your bulging biceps. But once you get into a relationship, you know, your sexual health kind of takes a back burner for some people. And we want to send a message out to you to let you know that sexual health is just as important as your physical fitness. Exactly. So take responsibility for each other's health, go deeper into your relationship, and go to StrongerTogether.us and take part into the campaign. And if you're eligible, you could even receive $80 for your time. Once again, that website is StrongerTogether.us. That's StrongerTogether.us. Go deeper. Peace. All right. Welcome back. We are here again with our Bachelor of the Month for July, Mr. Brian. And we had just started talking about, Brian mentioned that all three of his exes that he's been in a long-term relationship with. Oh, yeah, he said all three of his exes. All three of his exes, he remains a, uh, a, a type of relationship with them. He's friends. friends. Yeah, that's a relationship. Yeah. So I mean, he's friends with all three of them. It is. Uh, Mm -hmm. Is um, it a relationship? Well, I'm going to wait to see what you say next before. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. So, in your last relationship, which was, you said, seven, eight years, right? Mm -hmm. Did your two exes prior to that relationship, was there any issues with you being friends with them to your, for your new partner? I think it's all about boundaries. Okay. And to say that we're friends doesn't mean that I'm going over to your house every day, we're hanging out, going to the movies. It means that there's always that open communication. If you need me, I'm going to be there. If there's something going on, I'm going to try to support you. 
but you have to recognize and respect that I am something different now. And if you can't respect that, we can still be friends, but maybe friends from afar. So that's what I mean by friends. I don't think it means we all three need to go hang out. Together. Okay. So you're not like, I'll call them active friends with any of them. It, de it depends. I mean, I think that it's all situation based and it's all time based. <laughs> like I look at my ex that I had many, many years ago, I was a totally different person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the person I am today doesn't even see that person the right. same way. So it's a lot easier to be around them more often mm -hmm. versus maybe my last ex that's not so long ago. There's still a lot of strong connections and ties. And because I, if I was someone's lover, wouldn't feel comfortable with right. those ties, I try to keep it a little distant, but I always want them to know that I'm their friend. Okay, well, you know, I think that's a little different than what I'm talking about. And, I, and I'm not necessarily against people being friends with their, their exes, because Juan is friends with, you know, good friends with one of his exes, and I never had a problem with it. I think it, it always depends on the situation. But what I have a problem with is like, all right, well, me and you've been kicking it for a year. We're sick together. We break up, and then I'm dating somebody two months later, and then we're still the BFFs. Like, to me, how do you break up with somebody after a year and just easily just ease into a platonic friendship and then start, I think it can cause problems for the new relationship. I guess my question would be, if you were with someone for a year, why are you in a relationship two months later? Why? Well, that is a good question as well. You know, I mean, I think that you need time to heal, to sever relationships before you jump into something else. And you gotta be ready. And I'm not gonna say people can't be ready after two months, but for right. me, I think that sounds a little soon. Are you ready for a relationship? I am. I'll, how I'll, long have you been out of your relationship? Long enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, how long so, is that? I think that's a valid question. I have not counted up the months and years. I mean, it, it's, it was a transition. Longer than six months? Yes, definitely longer okay. than six months. Okay, yeah, I think that's valid. Yeah, definitely. So, so I want to know from that last relationship, in, in, in any relationship prior to, what have you learned about yourself that you will bring into a new situation? What have I learned about myself? I think that each relationship kind of prepared me for the next one. Mm -hmm. If I go way, way back, the first one I was a kid, so mm -hmm. that taught me accountability. Because I kind of thought that I could do what I wanted to do. Because mm -hmm. I was a child. I was a child right. trying to be a, a man in a relationship and I wasn't really ready for right. it. So that taught me to be accountable. And I think the long-term relationship, which is well, I spent most of my 20s taught me how to love someone else unselfishly and how to reprioritize things that when I think about you know, my path, my journey, my et cetera, it can't be a me, it has to always be a we. Mm -hmm. And I learned that in my last relationship. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to ask, so <clears throat> what would you say is your, in your last relationship, your ex-partner's biggest complaint about you in that relationship? What was his biggest challenge with you? I think that it goes back to the word that I don't like. I think sometimes the notoriety, <clears throat> because notoriety can be positive and negative. Yeah. Right? We have a lot of people who support you and love you and a lot of people who may not care so right. much. And I'm a strong personality. I'm either you love me or you can't stand me. Right? <laughs> and I'm okay with both of them, yeah. you know, but you know, I'm, I'm not one of those in the middle type of people. Yeah. And I think that that did affect the relationship because sometimes I didn't focus on building and stabilizing the relationship, I was a little bit more focused on being out, being social, being friendly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I'm a naturally friendly person. If I see you, I'm gonna hug you, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm very engaging. But for me, most times it's innocent, but you most have times. to- I, I, I gotta be honest, right? Sometimes you truly are attracted to yeah. I mean, so I'm gonna keep it real. Yeah. But most times it's innocent, but you have to think about not your intent, but how does someone else take it? And that took a long time for me to understand that, yeah, Brian, you're hugging this person, you may be kissing them on the cheek, and that's all it is to you. But in their mind, oh, you want them. Right. So then is there, that sounds like there were some insecurities on his part in, in your popularity, and I'll use that word, kind of fed into those insecurities that he might have already had. I won't put it on him. What I'll say is that it's my job to make you feel secure. And if I'm not making you feel secure, then I'm doing something wrong. I'm not gonna say it's insecurity on their part because obviously if it's an issue, it's my job as your lover to address it, correct it, and 
shift. So, uh, as it relates to that, because I kind of agree and I kind of don't. Mm-hmm. Because I do too. I but I'm not, I don't want to place blame on anybody. Well, I don't think it's about, it's, it's about recognizing yeah. just what the situation yeah. was. Good. You know, because sometimes someone has an insecurity that no matter what you do, that insecurity is going to be there until they fix them. Now, what I want to know is, because to me, popularity... Let me use that word in quotes, or being celebrated, notoriety, what have you, um, is one thing. Being friendly and huggy is another thing. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems as though there's a layer that's missing because I feel like, were you this popular when you got hit with this dude, or did, did it, did your popularity rise while you're in this relationship? I guess that's the first question. I think it's probably both. I think that I was known Mm -hmm. when we got together, but I think that as the years progressed, I started doing different things. I started putting myself out there more socially as far as on promotions and event planning and stuff. So naturally, the more you do in the public eye, the more people who know you. So I think that I did guess gain more exposure as relationship went on. So would you say you kind of neglected your relationship and your partner as you were more focused on your career? I don't think so, honestly, but I can't say that it was not a concern of my partner. Right. So <laughs> if it was a concern of my partner, obviously I wasn't doing something right, but I can't say that I agree. If I say I agree with it, I would be keeping it real. Well, I think that like going back to the insecurity thing about how it's your job to make that person feel secure. Um, I do kind of agree with that, but at the same time, I think I think that we all deal with insecurities in our relationship, and our partner should be aware of that, and they should be compassionate towards that insecurity, and maybe even you know put you know the foot forward to make you feel more go over and beyond to make you feel secure. But you also have to realize. That person also has to realize that they have an issue with being insecure and they have to work on getting past that as well. It becomes a relationship problem, but it's also an individual problem. So I just kind of, before we move on from that conversation with people that's watching, like who's people who might be in the same situation, if there's one partner who's insecure, I don't think it's only that other partner's job to make you feel secure. I think it's definitely a joint effort. Like you have to ask yourself, like, why am I feeling insecure? Mm-hmm. Like, why is my partner giving? Why do I take a hug or kiss on the cheek more than what it really is intended to be? So I think that's an important question. And if I can add to that, I mean, I, I totally agree. I think that you cannot control your partner's insecurity. Mm-hmm. That's a personal journey. And it takes them taking accountability, recognizing and wanting to change it. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is identify that that is an issue Absolutely. and do your part. So Absolutely. when I say making them feel secure, it means doing all you can right. to make them feel as secure as possible. But ultimately, if that person has that insecurity issue, no matter how hard you try until they fix it, it's going to be an issue. Yeah. So question, how do you, how far, how much do you compromise yourself to <clears throat> kind of address your partner's insecurity. So you're a hugger. Like how do you just not I'm hug people hugger. anymore? Or do you you're not be so, you know what I'm saying? Like how, how much do you compromise? What's the limit? Uh, I think it's understanding your environment mm-hmm. and discerning the people that you are engaging with. I think there are certain people that they know they feel comfortable with. So if I would hug with you two, they wouldn't think anything about right. it. But if it's an unfamiliar person they've never met before, then I think that's where you have to use discretion. Right. So I, I, I don't think it's saying, no, I'm, I'm a hugger and I'm gonna be who I am. I, I'm not, I can't be any differently, but I can also try to use better judgment if I know it's an issue. Right, right. Okay. I think that's a, a, a great time to pause, mm-hmm. have a word from our sponsor, and when we come back, Refreshing his drink. Refresh, please. refresh. Although <laughs> don't, don't drink that much anymore. <laughs> Cranberry juice. <laughs> and I want to get into a conversation on what it's like to be Brian Hinton in 2015 and on the dating scene. Because mm. you know how it is to date in Atlanta. We'll see what Brian thinks when we come back. <laughs>